Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. In this video we're going to be making feathers and I'm going to show you some great little tips and tricks for getting uh, these amazing results. First up I want to talk tools and equipment. These are the uh, feather templates. They're currently sold in a set of three which is your small, your medium and your large and then there is this extra large uh, which is sold on its own and separately all the details for that are on the uh, shop on the website which is mumsmakery.co.uk all of these templates have the unique little wiring hole you can see it there there we go and this is going to enable you to wire your feathers right in the template and it's going to make it so easy for you so you can create some really beautiful curled feathers and you can shape them to your desired effect. The feathers come in four sizes. This one is about 70 mil. This one is about 100 mil. This one is 130 mil. And the big one over here is 150. You've got a couple of colour options uh, in the kits which you can also find on the website. The first is this sort of brown uh, colour and that's created using these three colours. You've got the this one which is our natural cotton colour then this one which is the ash brown I'm not sure that the camera is picking up the lovely varied sort of fibres in this but hopefully that's a good enough for you to see and then finally we've got this one which is mouse and using a, a blend of these three colours, you'll get this lovely varied effect on your feather. There's also a grey version of this kit as well. And the colours in the grey kit are this off-white colour. Then we move to Arctic Grey and finally Storm. And all of these colours can be purchased as balls of fibre uh, in the shop as well. There's enough fibres um, in the kit to make five of each of the four sizes of feather obviously you can divide up the wool uh, depending on you know your project you're also going to get in the kit some 22 gauge florist wires a 24 would be fine um, but I like to put in these 22s there's not much wire bending or curling involved and these 22s do give a very, very nice support, especially when you're reaching into the larger feathers. So you're going to get a bunch of 24 gauge, uh, sorry, 22 gauge wires. And one wire is about 12 inches long and you can get a couple of feathers out of one wire. So next we're going to run through the tools and equipment that you're going to need to create a project. To make your feathers you're going to need a few bits of equipment you're going to need your felting surface and um, for templates i do recommend a surface that is uh, very flat um, you're going to need your felting template obviously a felting needle i'm also going to be using a multi-tool and my multi-tool only has two needles in it rather than the usual three that you find in this pen I find that that works best because you can felt in a straight line whereas that third needle is generally offset and can result in hitting your 
side of your template a little more. Multi tools are uh, okay to use with the more open templates, but I don't recommend them with the, the small ones because there's such a small area to felt in. You're going to need a touch of glue. I use the super glue gel rather than the super glue liquid. Uh, it gives you just a few extra seconds working time. It's not quite so grabby and I don't tend to stick myself to things quite so much with this. On this side, you'll probably notice this little guy. I've used this in quite a few of my videos now and this is a pocket scale. It can be picked up relatively cheaply on uh, eBay or Amazon, those types of, of stores. This will allow you to weigh out very small amounts of wool. So if you're making, you know, five of these things, you can weigh out the measurements for this template five times over and be very, very exact with it. This amazing stuff is Fluff Grip, which is available from Phlox to Felt. This stuff sticks fluff to wire. It, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It's great stuff. This is entirely optional. I use it just to uh, tack a, a little bit of fluff to the end of the wire when I'm doing the, the feathers. But again, it's entirely optional. You'll find the way that works best for you. There's a couple of pieces of equipment which you can't see on this um, screen right now. You're going to need an iron and some of you will now be sat there with an incredibly weird look on your face. We are going to do everything to wool today that you were always taught never to do to wool and it's worth it because you are going to get this wonderfully thin beautiful feather at the end of it so stay tuned for that there are a list of weights and measures that I use for the various template sizes and I will put that um, in the description box below so that you can see exactly what weight of what wall I use for the different size of templates I think that just about covers it so we're gonna crack on with making a feather the first thing I do is I weigh out the wool that I'm going to be using and for this template, this is the large, so this is the large one of the set of three, not the extra large one. This one is going to take a gram of the main colour of the feather and for this one it is the, I'm doing the brown one so I'm going to be using the ash brown as my main colour. So it's going to take about a gram of that, you can see that. Then you're going to need about a 0 0.3 grams of the off-white colour. And then finally you're going to need a 0 0.1 gram of the the darkest colour which in this case will be mouse which is there once you've weighed out you can obviously eyeball it um, the scales I, I really do recommend but it's entirely up to you find the way that suits you best to create this feather we're going to do a layering technique and at the end you're going to have that that sort of beautiful variegated and graded sort of look all the way up the feather like so you can obviously use whatever colors you like but get your trusty needle break everything that you have in half And this doesn't have to be an exact science, it's just a rough half, like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Take, decide which end you're going to start, it, it doesn't matter. Take the darkest one, and that's going to go up in the tip. 
and you're, you're going to tack it very, very lightly to your surface. And the emphasis is really on lightly um, with this. And you want these fibres to be sort of very sparse, but sort of filter out down into the sort of the rest of the template there. And don't be, you know, don't drive. But we're just going to get a, a tiny little bit of light adhesion to the surface just to hold that in place. Then you're going to get your lightest colour, which for this particular colour set is the uh, natural cotton. And you're going to go to the other end. Let's get some in that end there. Get it down into the template. And again, you just want that sort of wispy ends there to just sort of filter up into the template a little bit. And again, a little bit of light adhesion to the surface. Then take your main colour, just pull it about a bit and then you want to cover that pretty much almost end to end As you can know, I'm, I'm stopping when I'm hitting my surface. I'm just, just piercing, not driving in, because I don't want this attached to my surface. But I do want to use some light adhesion just to hold it in place while I'm getting all of this in. Don't want too much there in the tip. Let's bring that down a little bit. You know, just fill up the template as evenly as you can. going to come in with my multi-tool uh, these templates are all 10 mil uh, sometimes you get a 15 um, but I find that the 10 mil particularly in the case of the feathers does help you not stuff it full too much it sort of helps keep the amount of wool that you use sort of down which is going to end up with this beautifully slim feather it's going to come back to my single needle there we go and it's just getting that first that first layer and i know that the template right now looks pretty full Just spend a little bit of time there we go I'm just going to loosen that up just a little bit pop it back in it was barely holding on to my surface so I'm going to come back in with the multi-tool just for speed. I think I mentioned before using a multi-tool in these sort of more open templates is okay. Um, you don't want to be using one of those sort of seven needle punch or five needle punch tools uh, they generally don't fare 
very well on foam surfaces um, the impact uh, sort of cluster tends to break needles at a rate of knots so I've just gone round and gone over and you can probably see that it's it's not very firmly felted it doesn't need to be I'm just going to flip this over to show you very quickly what's happening on the other side you can see you've got that gradient from the very light fluffy through to this darker tip obviously when you're doing it you can place sort of different colored wool um, bits in different places to create the the effect you want you can also create the feather and then needle felt specific spots if you're going for a particular type of feather so let's turn that back over I'm just going to flatten it back down again it's taking it out of the template it's puffed it all up okay so we've got effectively one half of the feather in this template now we're going to put in our wire grab your wire this one is a 20 gauge florist wire and remember i said earlier there was that little wiring hole and it's just there so this allows a wire to go in quite easily i'm going to cut this down so I'm just going to take it to about here. I think there were a couple of things in the beginning that I completely forgot to mention uh, in the tools and equipment. You will need a pair of wire cutters. I believe also included in the kit there's some florist tape so that you can finish off the end. Um, but I'm only on my first cup of coffee this morning, so I do apologise. OK, to get this wire in here, get a little bit of your end colour. And I'm going to use this fluff grip. And I'm just going to touch the end of my wire into the fluff grip you don't want much of this stuff um, I've had this tin for ages and it, a little really really does go a long way I don't know if you can see just how little there is on that but do put the lid back on it is a fluff magnet and then all I'm going to do is just wrap a little bit of fluff around the end there, just on the end of that wire. Pop the wire into the wiring hole and then just pop it into a rough kind of curve where you want your the, the spine of your feather to be and what I'm going to do is just tack down that little top bit ever so slightly grab your glue and we are literally just going to dot four dots you 
just you just want it so it just nicks the feathers uh, the fibers rather going to hold it for a second or two you probably might want to let it dry for I don't know a few minutes but as many of you will know patience is not one of my virtues <laughs> so we're going to imagine that this is all dry and lovely Actually, you, you do want it so that your glue is, is just still a little bit tacky. But we're going to be careful to not touch it with our needle. What we're going to do now is work in reverse. So we started by putting in the dark and the light and then layering the main colour all over. What we're now going to do... is lay the main colour all over I don't want too much up in that tip there so I'm just going to pull that bit off there we go just work it down Obviously, do be careful now because you do have that, that wire in there. There we go. So there's that. Then we're going to come in with the white and lay that down at the end. And again, we're going to use that sort of feathering. Just let it blend up out into the feather. Like so. And then, that's not the dark, this is the dark. I'm just going to grab the dark. And go in at the tip and let this blend out the other way. So you lay the fibres down however you want but you can already see that sort of beautiful graded colour from the tip of the feather so very gently I'm going to lift it from my surface pop it back in the in the template go over it a little bit more so my 
surface is wandering. There we go. And there's the other side. You can see you've got that same gradient fill. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put in that um, sort of spine that you see going up the feather. To make that spine, you're going to need your lightest colour and just pull off. There's no real weight to this. This is just a, a pinch. We're going to do this on both sides and what you're going to do is roll the fibres like so. So you get a nice kind of straight line. Tack it down. And then just tack it in a couple of places, very lightly. So you can just see if you're happy with it. I want those to come out a little bit more, a little bit thinner. So I'm just going to pull and twist. And this is pretty much going to be right on top of your wire, so with care. And then just go over it if you're happy and tack it into place. I don't want it all the way up into the tip, so I'm just going to scratch that back a little bit. I'm just going to tack it down and you can see you get that sort of defined core. Turn it over and you don't have to do it all in one go, we can do it in little sections. Just get it lightly tacked down to make sure it's in the right place visually. That's fine, so just go ahead and tack it down a little bit more. A little bit more up in the top. There. So that looks a little, a little too much up there. So just pull it off. It's nothing you can't fix or change. I'm just going to frizz out that very, very end bit so that it kind of just sort of blends out into the feather. There we go. It's going to go all over it both sides. And then, moment of truth. Pop it out of the template, pull your wire out, and there you go, one feather. How about that? And I know a lot of you are nice out there going, oh my god Sam, that's awful, look at it, it's so thick and fluffy. But what we are now going to do to this is going to utterly transform it. So pop your iron on and grab your ironing board. And I'm going to show you how to finish this off. Okay, I've got my iron on and it's steaming. 
So I have no idea if it's going to completely mess up my cameras or not because I've never ironed on video before. This is on uh, a cotton setting, so it's it's not even on a gentle wool setting. Um, I've got this um, sort of up pretty high. And I've even had it on the linen setting, which is the, the hottest that it can be. And I haven't had any uh, real bad effects. There are no hard and fast rules. All I can say is be careful. Um, the way that I do this is you get your iron nice and steamy and you back and forth it and you take it off. Turn it over. Back and forth it. And then turn it over. And I just do this a few times. And you can already see that that thick, chunky um, feather is now so much slimmer. So just also remember that there's a wire and the wire will have been under this, so don't touch it. So there we go. That's now, look at that, super thin. And I've started ironing petals as well, um, and that's having some very nice results. And to just go over it, like so there and I suppose with the steam and the heat you know you're, you're kind of wet felting um, but you can see that this is all still very very fluffy and we're going to deal with that grab your scissors and just trim like so see that really nice crisp edge now and do the same on the other side and then back with the iron that really thin beautifully thin very realistic looking feather so finishing touches I don't know if these these scissors are sharp enough but you see feathers and they've they've got sort of splits and stuff in them so be brave and just cut into your feather and grab the tip of your iron and just sort of iron through see I'm sort of things puffing away um, sort of pull it back and just iron there and then iron there Hopefully I'm not fogging up the uh, overhead camera too much. And you can see you get that really nice sort of split. My opinion on this is, is less is more. Um, don't overdo it too much with the splits. So again, just going to go in in between that split. lift lift that out of the way there we go 
and you see how now we're getting those sort of very nice divisions it just I think it just breaks it up visually and I'm just going to put one more in the top because for some reason these things always look better in threes something that's coming out very very nicely now we've got these little splits the wire in it will mean that you can put some movement in the feather so I'm going to show you the last little bit of finishing off for the um, the stem down here take your feather and if you've got one of the kits there will be some florist tape in there and you may be inserting this into another project so um, you might not want to do this part you want to skip that part you may not have wired it there are so many options with these but I'm going to just create a feather so I want that sort of classic kind of bit of white quill stuck out the end so grab your wire cutters and decide how long you want that sort of bit to be I don't want it to be too long so I think that looks good and just shorten down your wire um, florist tape comes in lots of different colors and the way that we use this, we don't need very much for this at all, is you pull and stretch. You can hear that noise. And it's not sticky, but it sticks to itself. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to scooch that up ever so slightly and pop down my florist tape. Wrap it round and anchor it on itself. And once you've done that, you're good to go. Take it down. Don't hold it and do that because all that will happen is you will twist it. So it's exactly the same as wrapping wool. You want to keep it nice and flat. And take it down to the end. When you get down to the end, angle it back and then start wrapping back up because obviously um, this part on a feather is, is actually quite chunky so we were going to use the tape to bulk it out. So wrap it up to the top, wrap it round and round on itself. You can always add more of this stuff um, on the top. So I just eyeball it. And there we have that end. Um, quill for the feather my final little flourish is just to grab um, a wisp break it in half find the needle and this also helps kind of bridge the, the gap and lightly tack down this little bit of fluff a 
blend it up out into that first part of the feather and again it's the same colour that you've been using down here so it will blend very nicely and just leave it fluffy and that for me just gives it that little real feathery look like so and then because obviously we're wired you can create all sorts of nice shapes get a bit of movement make it look however you want it to look and if you feel that this is still a bit too fluffy hit it with the iron again um, obviously you'll need to redo this bit or we'll try to avoid that with the iron but there you have it one feather nice and thin you can perhaps take a little bit more time felting it down a little bit firmer if you want trial and error just you know see what works for you the weights and measures for all of the different sizes of feather I'll put in the description box below um, it does get very very small with the little one um, I think this this sort of tip up here is less than 0 0.1 of a gram but the, those scales I, I really can't recommend them enough as you can see these are all works in progress and then you've got your finished feather with the slices and the fluff and it just looks great there's a lot of options here's a little something that I've made let's get this out of the way this here is the um, the small and the medium and then I've put a real um, oh gosh what's the name of marabou feather and then some sparkles little bit of florist tape to bind it all together would look lovely as a, a hat fascinator perhaps a brooch mother's day's coming up perhaps mum would like a, a new fancy feathery thing so many so many options um, with these you can create all kinds of things that's it that's the feathers do pop along to the shop and uh, have a look there I have broken up the kits and everything into various options so you do have um, you know you can purchase the templates or you can purchase the, the material kit or you can buy both together there's lots of options there for you so there you go that's it the feather is all finished I hope you found this useful and that there are some tips and tricks in here that perhaps you can use in other projects as well. As I said, I have been um, starting to iron the, fed, the um, petals for flowers and things as well now. And that's looking um, really, really nice. So have a play with the techniques, see what you think. And I wish you all a very crafty day.